why do we see that the more left the progressives are in their free countries, the more they are likely to sympathize with jihadists? Why are they, as many would call them, useful idiots? Mm-hmm. Amichai. Yeah, I <laughs> see what you're saying. This is Johnny Gould's Jewish State, North America, Europe, the Commonwealth, the whole of the Middle East. The world is listening. 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 Caught up with Israel's Minister of the Diaspora, Amichai Chikli, in Krakow, just a short distance from Auschwitz, where we'd journeyed together with other international leaders as part of a European Jewish Association delegation. There was also a symposium on anti-Semitism in Europe titled Never Again, Lip Service or Deep Commitment. Among the notables, former Israeli President Reuven Rivlin, who pushed back in our interview on Polish Holocaust denial on Polish soil, and Elon Musk in conversation with Ben Shapiro. Scroll back for those episodes if you haven't heard them yet. And coming soon to Johnny Gould's Jewish State, Former French Prime Minister Manuel Valls, who conducts our interview in French. Amichai tells me October the 7th represents a reset for the House of Israel to achieve a new unity. He pays tribute to individuals within America's Jewish leadership who recognize the dangers of the university campus and that words eventually lead to much, much worse. We talk of the prospects for peace in Israel, where it'll come from, and through the worst days of Israeli-American diplomacy, how Israel must prevail over Hamas, whatever the Biden administration says. So that never again is now doesn't lead to a never again tomorrow. Amichai Chikli, welcome to Johnny Gould's Jewish State, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. The diaspora minister's job couldn't be more urgent today. We're talking about trying to bring all the Jewish people together. There is an engagement issue which you have to be on top of. Mm -hmm. So I think that the events uh, of October 7th has created, I would call it a reset for the world Jewry. Even those who were remote, all of a sudden care a lot more about their Jewish identity, the Zionism, the state of Israel, the future of the Jewish people. And you can see that within the crisis, there is an awakening of, of Jewish spirit. And you can see people who are fighting, uh, not just for uh, the cause of the state of Israel with regarding the war against Hamas, Iran, etc., but also they are fighting to be proud Jews to fully express their identity and they are not willing to give up. And I must admit that the first emotion I have towards the Jewish people at the moment is proud. I'm proud of my people. I'm proud about the younger generation who fights in US campuses, in England, wherever wherever they are. I'm proud of all those donors who left the boards and fight against anti-Semitism in university. I can mention two. It can be uh, Mark Rowan and Josh Harris and Bill Ackman and other significant players who said, enough is enough. We're not willing uh, to stay quiet this time. This is exaggerating. And when you see, uh, uh, it, it, it started even before October 7th when you had Roger Waters uh, invited to Penn University and obviously later on after uh, uh, the hearing of the three heads of, uh, of MIT uh, Penn and Harvard uh, the backlash and the fight unlike the past people understand that this is not a joke and these words are very very vile, are very very dangerous and it's not just what you're saying it's also what you refuse to say and the hearing in the Congress of Claudine Gay and McGill, it was shocking. 
it was absolutely shocking to see these heads of the top universities in the West unable to condemn out loud, without hesitation, the calling for a genocide of the Jewish people. This is, I think, the most frightening moments that I've seen uh, in the past decades uh, on anti-Semitism. And these words are powered in this new media age by social media. And some of the pushback that we get as Jews around the world, you can hear the dog whistles, mm. as we call it. You can hear it in the hate. You can hear the parallel to reality. And I must commend you on the speech that you made in front Thanks of the so European much. Jewish Association because um, it was a very passionate one. And we're here in Krakow. We're here near Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. And the symposium's subtitle is Never Again is Now. We have experienced yeah. a, a never again yeah. situation. We, yeah, exactly. We know what are the consequences of words. We know what are the consequences of this hate. We are very, very experienced. And I think one of the most um, fascinating things that Alain Finkelkraut uh, uh, said in his book, uh, it's an essay uh, in the name of the other. He said, uh, people thought that um, after the Holocaust, after Auschwitz, that, that's it. Anti-Semitism Will, will perish. Will, there will be no more anti-Semitism after such an horrific event. But what we can see now is that the same demons and the same hatred is refusing to let go. Where Jews felt empowered and free, we now feel vulnerable. Yeah. And that is in London and Paris mm -hmm. and Los Angeles and New York. But it's also... Yeah. in the deserted cities yeah. of the south of Israel, of Hakim and Sterot yeah. and the Kibbutzim, yeah. and in the north as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As it stands, yeah. the jihadists yeah. have won an important progress, which is that they are dictating where Jews should live inside sovereign Israel. It's essential, isn't it, sir, mm -hmm. that Jewish Israelis go back north and south and feel that they are safe in their far-flung towns yeah. and cities. So first and foremost, I would say something that would be optimistic. Please. When I, when I thought deeply on October 7, it reminded me of 1929 summer. Enormous, deadliest attacks, assaults against Jewish communities, especially in Hebron. 69 innocent people were murdered. Families were burned in Moza in Tzfat, in Jerusalem. We had more than 120 casualties all across the state and in the percentage of the community back then, about 400,000 Jews. There was an enormous number of Jews that were murdered. And people all across the world says, what? What do we need Zionism for? We have pogroms also there. Also in the state, it's not a, well, before we had a state, but also in this Jewish uh, reviving uh, Z Zionist uh, sphere, we have pogroms just like in Ukraine. So, so why bother? But we overcome uh, the consequences of Tarpat and we established a state, an amazing state. And yes, October 7 was a very, very difficult moment. And we're still in this moment, we're still in this war. But I am certain that we're going to win this war. Not just because of us in Israel that we're fighting on the ground, but also because of the fight of Jews all across the world. Now we are facing the coalition of hate. Radical Islam and radical left. That is combined. It had a name. Uh, I think that uh, the philosopher who, who put the name was Robert Weistrich. Uh, the green and red uh, axis. Mm -hmm. The combination of two separate movements. One, radical Islam, led especially by the Muslim Brotherhood, led by Qatar, led by Erdogan's Turkey, led by Hamas, with uh, 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 
Iran, Hezbollah, and the Shia uh, 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 axis, and they are combined with the radical left all over Europe. They hate the, the Jewish state because of their reasons. They hate the Jews and the Jewish state because of their reasons. And t- together they unite to fight against the Jewish state. And these are enormous power, enormous amount of money that is being uh, uh, invested in U.S. campuses, especially by Qatar. And it had severe consequences. And I think that the thing that we need to understand is we need uh, to persuade uh, the Western civilization and our fellow uh, friends for the Judeo-Christian civilization to understand that this is not a war of the Jews. This is the war of the Western civilization as a whole. Why don't millions of people in the West get that? Why do we see that the more left the progressives are in their free countries, the more they are likely to sympathize with jihadists? Why are they, as many would call them, useful idiots, mm-hmm. Amichai? Yeah, I see, what you, I see what you're saying. I think that the main challenge is the level of, of ignorance that exists among the younger generation in the West. You know, people today, they don't really tend to read books. Their main origin to consume information is Wikipedia or ChatGPT. Now, uh, if you will examine uh, Wikipedia, that is not a, a very serious... And, Encyclopedia. And now, yeah, so uh, we have a challenge in, in, with the basic facts. Uh, and people, uh, you know, even in the Knesset, for just to give you an example, I had a discussion with a, a, an Arab politician, a popular Arab politician, his name is Mansour Abbas, who says there, is, there was never a, a Jewish temple uh, uh, on Temple Mount. And I said, seriously? Open the Quran. The Quran speaks about Solomon and David. He was supposed to be a moderate. So, uh, if, if the Quran knows about David and Solomon, uh, and he admires them, so obviously, yeah, uh, David who built the other on Mount Moriah, and later on Solomon who built the first temple, you for sure, you know, it's, 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 it's learn, learn your uh, scriptures. And, and not to mention the average student, you know, in Berkeley, there was a very funny, sad and yet funny research about students who participated in demonstration uh, uh, shouting from the river to the sea, uh, Palestine will be free. And so they were asked, what is the name of the river and what is the name of the sea? And less than 50% uh, knew to, to answer this uh, simple question. Well, it wasn't the Thames, was it? Yeah, it wasn't the Thames. Um, so finally, sir, I'd like to ask you about the prospect for peace, because we are at a time where there are two conflicts. One of them is raging, out of control, and the other, God willing, inshallah, is approaching solution. And I'm talking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the Israeli-Arab conflict. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia needs to 2.0 itself. It needs Mm -hmm. to be, by 2030, building NEOM. Newcastle United need to be the Premier League champions. Mm -hmm. They need to have completed their golf takeover. Um, and the UAE, their peace, maybe a touch colder than it was when we started. So, so your point you know, is- we're going we're gonna to make peace through rebuilding Gaza using Gulf money, which will underwrite a more moderate Palestinian leadership in Ramallah. And Israel's security will be ensured with some sort of buffer zone in the mm-hmm. south. So it depends on, on a decisive and clear victory first. Um, I'm optimistic, as I mentioned before. One of the reasons Hamas has launched the attack with Iran backing him now was uh, the understanding that normalization with Saudi Arabia, peace with Saudi Arabia is close. A peace with Saudi Arabia means there is no more Israeli-Arab conflict. It does not exist. Already today, with Morocco, Bahrain, the UAE, it is, uh, it is not a significant 
uh, issue, israel Arab conflict, and obviously uh, Egypt and Jordan before. So they were afraid that they will be totally isolated and they will be irrelevant. And this was the last attempt uh, to destroy peace. So this is also a war against peace in the Middle East, and the war of Iran against peace in the Middle East, against a new order in the Middle East. This is why this war is so uh, significant, and I'm sure we're going to win this war. We're going to do the normalization with Saudi Arabia. We're going to have peace, and we're going to shift and change the future of the Middle East for generations. And it depends only on our will and determination in the faith of, of Am Israel and Netzach Israel. Amen. Amen. Kol HaKavod. Amichai Chikli, thank you very much for joining me on Johnny Gould's Jewish State. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was worth it, wasn't it? It was worth waiting for this moment. There's a lot of competing attention for you, I do know. You're probably consuming more media than ever before to be right up to speed with what's going on in Israel and back home. I'm playing my part in the best way I can, using my journalistic and production skills to make the case for Israel via this Johnny Gould's Jewish State, and I've done it since 2018. If you enjoy my podcast, and you'd rather it existed than not, that I kept doing it, you can support me very simply by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Johnny Gould because it really helps. Tell your friends, subscribe now if you haven't already, scroll back and look through the 120 previous episodes. And as always, thank you for listening. Johnny Gould's Jewish State is brought to you with Dangor Education.